It's all about Vans Duct Tape Invitational. Chris Cote with Shannon Hughes. And I'll tell you, the excitement levels are at an all-time high. We just saw a down-to-the-wire semifinal. And guess what? The, edge of, the edges of your seat, wherever you're watching from, are about to be worn out. You're in for a wild ride. Duct tape finals coming right up. Oh, that last semifinal was nuts to see Joao Chianca take it out. I'm so proud of him for making it through. So tight for Evan Geiselman. That was ridiculous. But now we've got this amazing matchup for our first final of the day here for the Vans Duct Tape Invitation with Honolulu Bloomfield and Kalis Kaleopa'a. And this is one of those matchups of the Titans. You know, Honolulu Bloomfield with multiple world championships is up and riding now. Oh, Kalis Kaleopa'a in the red jersey. I both these surfers with such beautiful styles. I mean, I, I feel like this is a really great matchup. They're so similar in so many ways. Uh, both obviously hungry for a win, as you see. Elise right there gets five over the nose. And she's going to ride this one all the way to the beach. So no problem with the transition there. I think things are changing a little bit uh, as we get through the day here. Uh, Huntington Beach is providing. And we saw a lot of waves ridden in that last heat. I think this heat is going to go down to the last three or four seconds as well. I, it definitely is going to. They've also got that extra five minutes on the clock, which is great heading into finals competition. The conditions are shaping up to be so beautiful out here today. That wind is still holding off. It's not glassy anymore, but that true onshore hasn't quite hit yet, at least for the women's duct tape final. And that's what we want to see. Nice, clean waves like this. Here is your three-time world longboard champion, Honolulu Bloomfield, doing what she does best, walking to the nose, finishing it off with a beautiful carve. Now she's fading right, scanning what's in front of her, doing some work. There you go, cross-stepping, another hang five. Ooh, and she gets worked on the inside section. You saw her running back to the tail. Really the only way you're going to be able to ride down a steep section like that is to jump back on the tail. These boards have no rocker. <laughs> They're not forgiving in tight, closed-out sections. So Honolulu Bloomfield did most of the work out the back. Wasn't a clean finish, so we'll see how that wave translates to the eyes of the judges. Kalis Kaleopa'a is looking at a great start, but let's take a look back at Honolulu Bloomfield's first wave. Honolulu getting off on an early start, got that nice nose ride to kick it off, and little cut back into the foam. This wave, not hugely critical, it goes for that switch stance approach, which Honolulu is probably the best of in the women's side of the field. She's she's really been perfecting that over the last few years. It's been a specific part of her repertoire that she's wanted to bring into the game and practice on. And then Kalise got a, got this for her opening ride. Beautiful footwork, style, grace, elegance, all coming through in the young competitor and sets herself up now for a really nice finish as well. So she got the work done that she needed to out the back, which the judges are gonna love. And then a nice critical in the pocket nose ride, beautiful rail work as well, and just stays silky smooth as she comes through to the inside section. That'll be the best of the exchange that we've seen so far. We get to take one more look at this one. That was a nice critical hang five from Hono. And then that nice carve redirects here. And this is the really important thing. These women have been watching the conditions all day and they've already surfed. So they understand how important it is to find that inside reform and it's looking a little bit easier than it did earlier today. An uncharacteristic fall from the always steady Honolulu Bloomfield on the finish. To me, that was something that she would kind of be kicking herself with for just a moment. She's got heaps of time on the clock, but had she been able to finish off that in section, she'd be looking at a decent score. Well, Kalis Kaleopa out with a big number to start, a 6-6-7. Six, six, uh, how the situation stands right now, not, uh, not exactly how uh, on paper it is because Honolulu Bloomfield has a five. That's a solid number, but she's backed it up with a three eight and start strong like Kalis did uh, at the moment, even though technically she's on top, Honolulu Bloomfield is now playing catch up. Yeah, she's got a little bit of work to do. That six six seven is going to set her up really well. Honolulu, the three time world champion, she won in 2017 and then consecutive back-to-back -back titles in 2019 and 2021. Now we're missing the world champ from 2020, but we'll get right back to that. Ooh, quick five to ten there for Kalise. Fans going wild. And this is just uh, such a great matchup. It's pure soul. I mean, both these surfers with beautiful styles, incredible, impeccable technique right there. That is this grace under pressure. 
gets the toes over the nose, so multiple nose rides. Five and ten combinations there for Kalis Kaleopa'a. I would say in a really nice spot. She has the luxury now of waiting, picking and choosing the waves that she wants. Uh, with a lead like that, that means Honolulu Bloomfield now needs a 7-5-7. Seven, seven. And uh, Kalis is not going to play the patience game. She's going to keep the pedal to the metal and apply the pressure onto Honolulu Bloomfield. But uh, from what we know, historically speaking, never count out Honolulu. Been calling her the Terminator for a reason. That is because... Definitely. Honolulu Bloomfield now. Kalis with the front row seat. And Honolulu now pulls out. I don't know if that was uh, a purposeful pull out or if the wave kind of just went underneath her. Either way, she's going to keep priority as Kalis was paddling back out. So that just shows you uh, a, a bit of the competitive knowledge, the high heat IQ that Honolulu possesses. She was going through a lot of different thoughts. She stood up, she saw in front of her Khalees paddling back out. She did the equation in her head. Is this wave a 757? She didn't think it was. It looked like she pulled out. Of course, I'm just guessing as to what she was thinking, but it, that's what it looked like on screen. Khalees now back at it. Another ripple that could turn into something. So right now it's uh, really starting to feel like a cat and mouse game, right? They're just kind of testing the waves coming at them. They've got so much time too. They are, they're on a longboard, you can paddle out to backline so quickly, especially when we don't have those giant sets, we don't have all that current today. They can get straight back out there really fast. And actually during the semifinals, I noticed Honolulu, a couple of the scores that she got against Rachel Tilly came from waves that didn't look like they were gonna stand up into anything, but as she stood up to start riding them, they really developed. So even just that idea of staying a little bit active in this first half of the heat, I'm a fan of it because you don't know, you might have something. All right, our men's Challenger Series finals are set. set. Thank you, Louisa. Yeah, that's gotta be nerve wracking. <laughs> and the difference here, which is a unique element to most uh, surfing venues is while the surfers are sitting in the water just like you would do in an NFL stadium if you're the quarterback you can look up and see what happened on the last play and uh, that's what Jack Chanka was doing during Evan Geisman's wave there was an exchange during the interview starting with Honolulu Bloomfield Gets a little bit of work done out the back. Nothing too extreme though. Just redirects here through to the inside and finds herself another nose ride. Great trim line I like the use of that upper body as well, kind of quiet. She always has that right arm up in the back, upheld nice and high. It's really the Honolulu style. And finishes off really well on the inside. She is looking to improve on a five. And then Khalees had a look at this one. That was a beautiful little combination. Keeps that flow moving, nice bottom turn as well to project through after that outside nose ride. Start setting it up here. And we're really looking at this grace coming through within her surfing, but also capitalizing on some great sections. That was a very well-ridden wave from both surfers. Um, and I think with that, it's really gonna start to set the tone for what our surfer in second place is chasing to take the win. Kalis Kaleopa'a is in the lead, Honolulu Bloomfield in second. With priority, she needs a 757. Nice looking peak here, right at the pier bowl. So Honolulu has shifted over towards the pier a little bit. She gets up on the nose. And that's the combination that's been getting her through so many heats in this competition. A little nose ride to turn. She does get that cross step cut back there. This wave could form up for her nicely on the inside. She's got some open face to work with. Building speed, momentum, gets the five over the toes. Or the five toes over the nose, I should say. And that's the clean ride out that we've seen from Honolulu. Heat after heat. 14.30 to go. Was it a 7.57? Wow, that was such a good wave. The outside section, the way that it actually broke up by the T on the pier, that's the bigger set that we've seen rolling through so far. She got such a perfectly placed nose ride, and you could see she was able to take her time with it as well. Let's have a look at it here. Sets it up. Quick footwork up to the nose. Gets fully locked over. That board, that nose way locked into the arch of her foot as well, which just shows that commitment. I love the use of variety as well. Something the judges are loving is that cross step cut back as long as it's functional. And then you can see that bottom spray off that turn looking really, really solid. 
And then this, I was not thinking she was going to be able to make it through, but all of her experience in end sections like that. To get back in the lead, which has been held down since the very beginning of this heat by Khalees. But this happened during that break. This is Honolulu. She got that nose ride to start. This wave looking a little bit more bumpy as well. You can see that board just kind of picking up the bump as well as she's cutting through. It doesn't have quite as much flow to it. Still a nice nose right out the back, though. Doesn't make the inside connection. Curious to see what Khalees got up to on this one. Nice footwork, finds that little quick hang five. Nice and smooth, and I love that little redirect as well. Beautiful rail-to-rail -rail surfing, which is what we want to see when those surfers need to gain a little bit of speed. Looks like she's not going to make that connection. And I'm just loving the battle between these two at the moment. We got North Shore against South Shore. Honolua from the North Shore, Kelis from the South Shore. We've got a little bit of age on Honolua, a little more competitive experience behind her. The first year she made it onto the world stage at this level for the Hainan event, which is where we used to crown our world champions, was back in 2015. We didn't see Elise graduate to that level until the 15-year-old made it into the pack in 2019. But she did take out a big win within her career already. Kalise won the 2020 Noosa Longboard Open, which set her up as a front runner in the title race that year. Here she is. Quick hang five, cut back. That's the formula for success as we've seen so far. Now she's got a nice section to weave through and is unable to continue on down the line. That little lump that keeps coming up underneath these surfers, making it that much harder to do the connection. You know, it's a flat section and then the lump comes up. So it just adds difficulty of making it through. And then of course, boom, you got that close out right on the sand, which is really scary on a nine foot board. It's pretty much the opposite of what we ever want to surf on a longboard is a close out on the shore break. Exactly. Seven and a half to go. Honolulu Bloomfield now. There is an opening. So if she can put up a big score right now in the wave out the on the outside section, no help at all, closes out all around her. You see her throw her hands up. And here's a soulful character right here, Taylor Jensen making his way into the lineup. He's gonna go out in his final going up against Kaniela Stewart, number nine and number three in the world. Board's looking nice, freshly waxed. He's ready to go. Taylor Jensen about to put on a show for all of us watching. 5.16 to go. Activating on this left, it is Kalis. She gets to the nose, has to straighten off the wave crumbling around her, but it's gonna give her enough energy to make this inside section. Be careful what you wish for. It's gonna bowl up in a strange way, and here we go. It does, she rides straight down, nice and clean to the sand. The best way to prevent a stingray whack is to run it over with your surfboard. There you if go. You ask me, that's totally fine. I love all creatures, except stingrays. <laughs> except stingrays. Bonus being a longboarder, you got a huge fin in the back, so you can try and chase them away with that too before you actually step down onto your feet. So she's chasing a big score already, a 7.2. Finds that hang five, but just gets stuck with that coming off of it. And then Khalees. We're taking a look at this one. I love that outside combo. Finds a nose ride, gets that little car back. This wave closes out really quickly. It wasn't like a really huge redirect either until this moment. And then she just finds that flow and she does everything she needs to at this stage. She doesn't push that nose ride, which she would have fallen on. She pedals back and as a long border, one of the most important things to riding out of a closeout section like that, no matter where you're at in the world, is to get your back foot over that fin to really push down on the tail so that you can keep that nose out of the water and you can keep a lot of control. You can ride out of a well overhead closeout that way as long as you've got your feet in the right position and still keep that style, maybe even get just a little bit of a check turn like under the lip. 22 waves ridden in this final. Of course, on a long board, easier to paddle, easier to get into waves, easier to get back out to the takeoff zone. Uh, and both of these surfers have made full use of their time. They both have 11 waves ridden. But it doesn't matter how many waves you ride, it's two waves that will be totaled up to figure out who will be first, who will be second. And as it stands now, Kalis Kaleopa'a in the lead. Honolulu still needing that 7-2-0. And that was Connie Ellis Stewart, who's paddling out in the men's heat against Taylor Jensen. Connie is Kalisa's cousin. 
and with the Hawaiian flag on him was Kalisa's little brother Moses who is an absolute champ he was sharing with me uh, Kalisa's taste in music is very traditionally Hawaiian she's got some massive playlists that go up to you know well over that two day mark you just keep listening to music that never ends and it's all Hawaiian style where Honolulu I think has a little bit of a different taste prefers a little Justin Bieber some other little you know flavors within it and um, at the moment it's it's one of the Hawaiian natives in the lineup that's going to be taking the win, and it looks to be very favorable for Kalis, the princess of Waikiki, following very well in the footsteps of Kalia Muniz, the two-time world longboard champion who bowed out of competition this year, although she was in the rankings and had a spot. They're expecting their second child and just really starting to set the tone of that South Shore crew out of Waikiki. There's so many great kids that have come up, but women like Kalia Muniz who's kind of set that tone for that next generation. And it was Honolulu Bloomfield last year winning her third world title in the water while Kalia Muniz was surfing to take away that two world title tie between the two Hawaiians. Oh man, so Honolulu Bloomfield, you see her sitting out the back. This is uh, her moment to ponder what happened. I mean, she's probably getting very used to winning all the time. And this is a win. I mean, a semi or a final finish second place on the world longboarding tour is huge uh, it's a rare occurrence for Honolulu, but <laughs> you don't want to uh, poke that monster because if you make her mad she will make you pay and going in to our final stop at malibu where she's got probably a little bit of a you know mix right residual scar tissue from not winning but also that's where she won her last title so uh, it is going to be a epic finish to our WSL World Longboard Tour. I can't wait to see what happens next. I can't wait to see in the next 47 seconds if Honolulu gets an opportunity to put something on the board. I've got to feel like all the momentum, it's been with Kalise from, from that opening exchange. She found a 6-6-7 six, six, from her first wave. It took Honolulu seven waves to get herself into the fives to put something that really counted on the scoreboard. And for Kalise, with her taking a win here, it now ties up the rankings. Both Honolulu and Kalise are going to head into Malibu with 5,000 points with a tiebreaker on the line to win that world title. 15 seconds left. Will this wave come in time? Both surfers having a dig for the first wave of this set. Eight seconds left. Honolulu identifies something coming in. Time is winding down. Three, two, one. And the horn blows just a second too soon. Honolulu can't catch that wave. Congratulations to Kalis Kaleopaa representing Oahu, getting the win here at the Vans Duct Tape Invitational 2022. Gets a hug from Cousin, and wow, you know that has to fire up our surfer in blue, Kaniala Stewart. His cousin just won the Vans Duct Tape Invitational, and he's right out there to greet her. What a story we're starting to see unfold. Welcome back to the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. We just saw a big win for the Hawaiian, Kalis Kaleopaa, to take out the women's title and she is basking in the glory of the hawaiian flag getting chaired up wow i just get this is like a chicken skin moment for me um kaipo and this peter mel that was pretty cool meaningful meaningful stuff for sure you know and uh, you know hono had actually paid tribute to Kalis and about how much fun they were going to have together in the water uh, Kalise taking this big win for her. Congratulations, and it's a major win. You know, being a, a Vans U.S. Open champion or a Vans Duct Tape Invitational champion here on the sands of Huntington Beach is a huge uh, accolade. Not to mention 5,000 points to her credit and an opportunity to become a world champ when we head to Malibu in October for that championship. Well, it's the men's final right now, and it is a veteran, a three-time world title champion in the way of Taylor Jensen against another upstart from Queens on the south shore of Oahu another upstart from Hawaii Kaneala Stewart I love this matchup we're gonna have power in the way of Taylor Jensen versus the smooth style and footwork of Kaneala Stewart yeah, thinking about this already I was realizing in the final you've got representation of Hawaii in every division that's right what is it about Huntington Beach in the in Hawaii? It, it, I mean, is it 
Is it the wave? Is it the vibe? I think it's just effort, you know? I mean, I think, I feel this wave takes a lot of effort. And um, the Lions putting in that effort. Look at 2011, 2012, 2017, Taylor Jensen. He's also won two U.S. Opens as well back in 2003 and 2008. So very decorated. And he would be the veteran amongst uh, these two competitors versus Kaniala Stewart, hometown Waikiki, Oahu. A classic surf break Queens that has been surfed for hundreds of years. And Kaniala Stewart continues on with that cultural tradition of surfing. So cool. And, uh, you know, of course, Duke Anamoku, a huge part of that heritage, you know, going to the Olympics, and he's recognized around the world. All right, well, hey, let's celebrate a win. Let's celebrate a win for Hawaii. Kalis Khalil Pa'a is your 2022 Vans Duct Tape Invitational Champion, and I want to hear from her. Yes, so many hugs and kisses over here. It was a huge win for you. Thank you. How are you feeling? Um, I just feel so loved. I like the support with my family and friends. Like, it's un like unbelievable. Like, hugging my cousin in the water after that final was just, like, so heartwarming. And, uh, yeah, I feel I'm filled with a lot of love. <laughs> Did you tell him something? Oh, I just said, like, you got this. You can do it. I was like, bring it home, like, so we can have a big rager when we get home. But, no. I was just hanging out with your family in the athlete zone, and they asked me to tell you how proud Waikiki is <laughs> of you. Do you want to say something to them? Yeah. Literally, my whole entire family and friends, our surf community back at home, like, they're my motivation when I come out here because like, we come from such a special place. And uh, I grew up surfing my whole entire life around my uncles and aunties. And, like, this, I do this, like, for them as, like, a thank you for, like, introducing me to this sport or passion that I love so much. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Go bask in the victory. You deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Congratulations. Kelis, oh my god, that was awesome. Again, chicken skin. Well, here we go, Kaniala Stewart now up and riding, representing Hawaii in this final. It gets to the nose, and that style just oozing from the lanky Hawaiian surfer, also from Queen Surf Break, makes his way again to another five. Skates through this flat section, and a light-footed rebound on the inside before ending up on the shore so Connie Alice Stewart that's going to be his start to his matchup against Taylor Jensen such great board control it's truly incredible how he's able to just weave back and forth and read it so well again to see how quick footwork look where he's actually trimming on the other side of the stringer when he's going right you see the footwork is over on the rail side holding it in and then again onto the tip all this work just keeping the glide roller coaster from the midpoint of the board once again best number of the heat obviously but a great start waiting for that number to hit our scoreboard so we can update you on the earnings of Connie Alice Stewart on his second wave first wave not going to be a factor, just a just a fractional up and down. So this is going to be his first real number. You can see that 0 0.77. That's going to count for nothing at the end of this, this heat. A 4.83 checks in for the start for Kaniala Stewart. Priority shifts now to Taylor Jensen. Waiting for that number to hit our scoreboard so we can update you on the earnings of Kaniala Stewart on his second wave. First wave. Not going to be a factor, just a just a fractional up and down. So this is going to be his first real number. You can see that 0 0.77. That's going to count for nothing at the end of this, this heat. A 4.83 checks in for the start for Kaniala Stewart. Priority shifts now to Taylor Jensen. You can see him, see him sitting out in the back in that red jersey. Big week for Taylor Jensen. Three-time world champ. Dropped a uh, new pro model with Firewire surfboards, the TJ Pro 5 made in that Thunderbolt construction. So all that stuff hitting stores right now. And what a timing for Taylor <laughs> yeah. Jensen to get a new, a new model out on the store shelves the same week that he finals here at the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. And you know that someone with his caliber and accolades and understanding of equipment, that the design is going to be something that's going to work pretty darn well. 
Well, it's been working pretty well, right? That round pin that he's been utilizing and has been looking smooth as opposed to the majority of the field with big square nose rider tails. So uh, the TJ Pro 5 looking the goods. Do you know much about that Thunderbolt construction, Peter? Not a ton. Uh, it hasn't made it into the floor of a Freeline Surf Shop, so I, I don't have uh, all of the, the uh, tech aspects of it. But I know that Firewire is at the forefront of trying to mix up and utilize different materials. And I feel like of anything that's happening in board design, yes, template, uh, rockers, uh, fin plates from fin design, all that stuff's um, pretty cool because, but we're 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 recycling a lot of design theories there you know it's not like you can go all of a sudden just completely throw that upside down but as far as construction goes and utilizing different materials those are always getting refined you know the cores foams uh carbon and, and epoxy those types of things and flex pattern all of those things are still in the infancy in my eyes well i, I think that construction works pretty well for long boards uh, also boards built for kai salas in that construction ben skinner and soleil erico all for that same construction so um, good job to all the people over there at Firewire and their commitment to longboarding. We're committed to longboarding as well here at the World Surf League. We've already got a women's champ. We're looking to crown a men's champ as well. This is stop number two on the World Longboard Tour. With the tide filling in, Peter, things have slowed down just a tad. Well, we expected that. You know, one thing that happens uh, at Huntington Beach you know, we just hope that that windswell holds. We did see the surf line forecast. It goes the other way. So we've had sets from both directions. Taylor Jensen and a quick cross step to the nose for a five. And stays steady through this flatter water on the inside, unable to make the connection to the shore break. Both these surfers have an incredible read on, you know, the energy of a wave and where to keep the trim and sometimes they're like, okay well am i gonna have to commit to the inside in this one taylor says no dice there's not enough energy for me so i'm gonna kick out kaniala perched on the nose for an extended period of oh. time and unfortunately seems like he got a little greedy on that tip time and it cost them oh. this they're both like quick flinch saw something going on outside Wave number one, it looks like a two-wave set, and decision time for Taylor Jensen. He's going to go on wave number one. Here we go. Fade into the right and gets a 10, arching through that hang 10. Powerful turn, signature move for Taylor Jensen, cross-stepping and getting into the planing area of the board to connect the dots from the outside to the inside, pushing down on that rocker and makes it to the inside again. Oh, some beautiful tip time there. And a finish, so you talked about a breakaway score, Peter. I think we just saw that. I would agree. Extra time on the tip. Again, great footwork. Utilized the entire wave from start to finish. He actually moved outside a little further than we'd seen anybody grab a wave. So he saw that that opportunity was there, and he put himself on that outside section. And you see that little bottom turn. It's not really even a bottom turn. It's almost a stall, but and then jumps to the tip. And look at that. The style arches his back, and then this cutty. And look at the arm placement drives through it too you know held the rail through the maneuver nice and smooth and then actually pulls that arm up over his shoulder a little extra accentuation and then this here had to make that inside section and look at back on the tip and then the little swivel on the tip control with the finish i mean this is going to be a magnificent number for taylor jensen yeah i i concur he uh, checked all the boxes uh he utilized the entire length of the board he got some nose riding time style flow and grace all executed there making the difficult look easy and just check the boxes all the criteria and checking them in the number of a 7.67 so as we anticipated pete that was the breakaway score for taylor jensen and now connie alice stewart needs to answer back with a 5.85 or higher and here's all the judges numbers Pair of eights there, pair of seven fives and a seven, knock out the seven and the eight, average the two seven fives and eight together. That's where you get the 7.67. I'm feeling good about the score. I, I, I think the judges got that one spot on, um, given that performance. They did leave a little bit of room into the excellent range, in which they should, because there may be some bigger, better waves and maybe even more nose ride time available. 
Paying our attention to Kaniala. Pier Bowl on the nose, has to step back quickly. Little bank on the oncoming Whitewater. Now some footwork through this middle sec transitionary section. And cross step to the nose, gets the 10, and Soul Arches through that 10, hangs on to it, and gets the finish, Kaniala Stewart. We also had Taylor Jensen on that same wave further down the beach. And another paddle race out to the outside. And a paddle race is going to begin right now for priority. So both surfers taking that wave, and that's going to mean the judges are going to take a little bit of time to get these scores in because I guarantee you they're going to have to do some video review, which are available to our judges. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. We get to watch also on this one is Taylor Jensen. So at different peaks, priority was with Kanyala. Wow, nice little driving turn there. We saw him quickly run to the front of the board at the very beginning of that way, but really the outside move was that turn. I really like how Kanyala is able to move his board through that midsection. He's always moving left, then right. He's committing the rails through it, not just a gliding straight. He actually moves back. Watch. You see him, he just goes up to the front of the board, and then he'll transition the inside rail, and then he'll go back to the other rail. And that was pretty cool right there, especially That's when he gets 10. the 10 and is able to pull it out. Well, so we're going to see, uh, I think we're going to see Kanyala's best number for sure, obviously. And, uh, you know, in comparison to the 767. This one on the paddle. Stewart going left this time. Cross stepping up. Five there. Has to skip through some slow water. Gets back on the nose and hangs there for a bit before redirecting on the inside. Smooth cross step cut back and weaving through a flat section back up on the nose for Kanyala Stewart. Pressing down on the nose and stepping back on the board to control the finish. Stewart. Last score for Taylor Jensen, a 6.17. Waiting for two scores for Kaniala Stewart to set the situation. Six point ride for previous wave of Kaniala Stewart. We're still looking for another score to set the situation. Here's the replay. This was the last wave. We haven't seen this score yet, but I mean, I felt like to me personally, Kaniala's wave was a little better than Taylor's in my eyes. That's just my opinion. It came on slightly under. But watching this one here, outside work, wasn't able to get the full tip time, but that was beautiful. A little swivel on the nose, pressing as you had mentioned. So difficult to do to keep that board and lift it up. Well, Kaniela needs a 7.84 if he wants to turn the heat in one wave. And the waves are starting to turn on. Here we go. Big set wave here, too. Taylor Jensen on the nose and pearls there. So missed opportunity for Jensen, but quick hands to grab that board and not lose it. Um, as he, both surfers are surfing uh, free, freely without leashes. So really gra good to, for Taylor Jensen to have that quick reflex to grab those bo that board and uh, yeah, he loses avoid board. having to swim to shore. Yeah. US Open of Surfing is brought to you by 
Vans, off the wall since 66. By Pacifico, official beer of the Vans US Open of Circuit. Live life anchors up. By Youth Theory, official vitamin and supplement of the Vans US Open of Surfing. By BF Goodrich, official tire of the Vans US Open of Surfing. And by Stillhouse, the unbreakable spirit. It's finals time here at the Vans Duct Tape Invitational Men's Final out in the water. 12 minutes remaining and counting down on the clock. Taylor Jensen, a three-time world champion, out in the lead over Kaneala Stewart representing Oahu, Hawaii. And here we go on the replay of Kaneala Stewart, Peter. Again, that beautiful walking up and down the board. So nice from Kaneala. He stays with this one. Even during the midsection, he's able to walk up and down that board, just gliding. He's like he's on an escalator. Back to live action. And looks like it was just uh, Taylor Jensen coming off the wave. And that score is in there, Kaipo. Uh, it doesn't one, factor three. in. Yeah, for Kaneala Stewart, doesn't factor in. The need remains the same for Kaneala. In the blue jersey, a 7.84. Taylor Jensen was able to get back out the back and regain priority. Priority in the lead, heat control with Jensen. Yeah, at this point, I think Kaneala's strategy would be just wait it out, wait for another, you know, major set wave, because that'll be a point of difference if he can find himself a nice sizable one and just do the surfing he's been doing all week long that's going to be able to if you can get into the excellent number there that's going to turn the heat for him and turn the momentum let's check out our heat recap peter starting off with taylor jensen so taylor jensen this was uh early momentum with him 7.67 the engagement of the rail on the outside section the tip riding as well you see the difference for me is that mid part of the wave where Kaniala is able to kind of engage his rails through it, whereas Taylor kind of glides through it, but the inside, you see he's able to get a little bigger guy, so he's able to get that board driving through maneuvers. This one here came in at a 6.17. Again, that was a, again, a full engagement of the rail. Judge is digging that one as it came in as a 6.17. So those are the two top numbers for Taylor Jensen. This was actually being ridden at the exact same time that Kaniala was riding his best wave. Back to live action and catching up with Kaniala Stewart. Smooth through the middle, nice redirection, and now planing through some dead water, no problem. He makes the connection into the shore break. And great footwork finishing off there. Kaniala Stewart, again, needs a very good score of a 7.84 for Stewart. Yeah, unfortunately for me, that just the wave quality on that one wasn't as high, but I mean, I love the way his transitions are from that outside to the inside. It's just smooth, it's silky. He's actually moving up and down the board at the same time, just gliding. Look at that, ooh, 10 out there on the back part of it. I like that. On the backhand, you see this little moments where he just looks at it, it's following the energy of the wave and able to get to the tip, even on the mid part, just gliding in. Again, just such great footwork. And it's nice, he just gets on the tail at the appropriate time, right as the wave gets really steep and to avoid purling that no nose. Do you wanna, I wanna? No. See, no? You've heard it before. Here we go. Stewart with an opportunity, but not a lot going on this wave. Gets up to the nose, taps a five. Nice redirect, nice drop knee. Some cross foot steps there, gets more nose time coming through here needs to get lucky in the shore break five spins around tries oh. for the switch stance which would have been brilliant but the wave got away against that pier there's definitely the agitated water which is always so hard because the water is actually moving out as a current against him and so that's what gets that water all agitated you're riding backwards through that water was takes a lot of skill Here's our tides for today. We've passed the high tide. We're, I mean, past we're past the low, the low tide. tide, I'm sorry, on our way to a high tide. Local time here, almost 1 o'clock, so um, we're, we're in a mid-tide zone. Yeah, well, and 2.6 low is not a very low tide. So, I mean, it really not didn't get low like we saw early in this event. So we watch the replay here. He had to transfer over 
to that section, and that's where his footwork really started. But you can see right here is where all that water moves out underneath the pier. Oh, that was such a brilliant. Creates a lot attempt. more friction. Yeah, the wave almost stops right there, right? Well, you see the wave actual speed. Yeah, it does. It slows down, and then the water's all choppy, so you have to plow through that. And it's just a, a challenging part of the lineup to really execute any maneuvers. Although a longboard, it kind of plows through it. Is that? But I just felt like you know when he's on the tip of the nose of the board, it just hitting those rails and slowing him down wasn't able to get down into the shore break section, so it didn't factor into his top two. Taylor Jensen is going to use priority right now. That is definitely a paddle. Here we go. Taking it left. And just has to trim their kicks out. Well, there's the first defensive move I've seen so, <laughs> from yeah. Taylor Jensen. That was certainly a defensive move. Now, 30 seconds. Is there a wave? Kaniala Stewart. 7.84 is the Ooh. lead. Here comes a wave. Oh, we like those finishes. It gets the opportunity here. And Connie Alice Stewart gives thanks before he paddles into this wave. Now it's all Connie on the nose. A little soul arch through that section. Explosion there, a little unstable water. No problem for Connie Alice Stewart. He needs to stick with this as he stays in the white water, reading the bump, heading on to the inside. Connie Alice Stewart cross steps his way to another tap of a five on the inside here. He has to straighten out as the wave doubles up. 7.84, it's a big ask, it's a big number, and Connie's just going to step off on the sand. I love that he gave thanks, best. that he was like, hey, give me the opportunity, that's that's all you can ask for. And he beached it, so he's got the judges thinking. Casually out of the water as Taylor Jensen's going to near the shore, and anticipation of that final score, let's take another look at the last ride for Connie Alice Stewart. Good size wave. Look at that's full on, shoulder high, on the tip. Was able to get quickly back. Keeps his balance, engages the rail. And again, I love this mid work from Kanyala. Just so good at transferring his weight through the rail on the tip. Again, wow, he's definitely going to have those judges think about it. Yep. Well, the judges thought about it, Peter, and is a 5.6, not enough for Connie Alice Stewart. So it's Taylor Jensen, your 2022 Vans Duct Tape Invitational Champion. Big congratulations, has been on point all week long. And security grabbing Taylor's board. <laughs> Does he need security? There's security that takes you up and down, yeah. He's a big guy, but a yeah, standard procedure. All right, there's your champ, Taylor Jensen, for the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. When we come back, we're going to switch gears. Oh, well, it's going to be the Women's up. Challenger Series Finals out in the water. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. And thank you, Huntington Beach, for coming out. <laughs> First of all, the WSL would formally like to recognize Huntington Beach as the traditional homelands and shared territory of the Aha Shaman and Tongva peoples. It is known by the name Lukupangma in Aha Shaman and, Tong and Tongva languages. The Aha Shaman people have lived in this place we call Orange County for over 10 thousand years and are still here stewarding the land along with surfers, environmentalists, and others who care about our shared coastline. We thank them for their ongoing presence and participation in this event. Now it's time to welcome to the awards presentation for the 2022 Vans US Open of Surfing. This is the fourth stop on the 2022 World Surf League Challenger Series and the second stop on the 2022 WSL Longboard Tour. I'd like to thank again the fans here at Huntington Beach. Love to thank all of the surfers that have made this happen and all of the crew because this has been nine days of the world's largest action sports festival. Of course, thank you to Vans. Again, 
I want to thank Vans as our pre presenting sponsor. Vans, keeping it rad since 1966. Thank you, Vans. Thank you. Also, our event partners, and we have a lot of supporters. Visit Huntington Beach, Red Bull, Flying Embers, Hydro Flask, Shiseido, the good people at 805, Pacifico, Sambazon, Stillhouse, Youth Theory, BF Goodrich, Foo Wax keeping it sticky, Box Water, and Just Egg. Let's give a hand for all the supporters because without them, this doesn't happen. Special thanks to IMG and the event staff, all the athletes, and again, the local community for your support of this event. On stage with me, we have Kira Seal, the WSL Senior Manager of the Longboard Tour. Travis Logie, the WSL Senior Manager of Tours and Competition. Jesse Miley Dyers here, the Senior Vice President of Tours and the Head of Competition. A man that needs no introduction, Mr. Steven Van Doren. and the mayor of Huntington Beach, Barbara DeGlaze. You guys ready to hand out some hardware? Let's get to it. Runner up for the 2022 Vans Duct Tape Invitational Award, Smooth Surfer from the South Shore of Oahu. Let's give it up for Connie Alla Stewart. Come on out here, Connie. Oh yeah. Connie, I, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Finals, big week over here, and you were one of the smoothest surfers out in the water. Your takeaway? Uh, I had fun. I love it here. Um, it was just a little tricky to find the good ones, but Taylor got some good ones. But um, yeah, just happy to be here. Thank you, guys. Connie Ellis Stewart. <laughs> Runner up in the women's division for the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. I want to call to the stage Honolua Bloomfield. Come out here, Hono. Another Hawaiian. Honolua, we've had two events on the World Longboard Tour, and you've been in the finals of both. Your takeaway for here from Huntington Beach. Uh, I'm just stoked to be here. I'm stoked there's three events this year. Uh, thank you all for coming to support and watch. And thank you Vans and WSL and all my sponsors and all the sponsors of the event. Let's give a hand for Honolulu Bloomfield. <laughs> now our men's champion for the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. He's a three-time world champion. He's a two-time U.S. Open champion, and he's got another award coming to him. Let's give it up for Taylor Jensen. Taylor, the feeling right now, a champ once again here in Huntington Beach. Yeah, this is surreal. Just thanks, everybody, for coming out and watching. WSL, fans, stoked. Yeah, Brad, thanks. Round of applause for Taylor Jensen. Yeah, Taylor. And now, our women's champion from the Vans Duct Tape Invitational, beautiful surfer from the South Shore of Hawaii, representing Waikiki, and now she's our champ, Kaylee's Kaleopaa. <laughs> Kaleese, I gotta talk to you. Oh, yeah, I do, I do, because this is a big moment. <laughs> Khalees comes from a deep, deep heritage in surfing, and she's continuing on. I'm, I'm just so proud of this young lady. How does it feel to be the champ? Oh, I'm just stoked to be back in Huntington, surfing alongside all these amazing surfers, <laughs> especially Connie. But um, I didn't compete in the first WSL of the season, so it feels nice to come back here, get a win, and just have fun. Well, you got it. Some good points. 5,000 points leading up to our world championships. That's going to happen in Malibu on October 3rd through the 13th. That's going to be the waiting period where we're going to have the final stop of 
the World Longboard Tour at the World Surf League. So congratulations to all of our longboarders. And now let's get back to breaking down finals day. So as we all knew, coming into finals day, we were going to see semifinals action from both the Challenger Series as well as the Vans Duct Tape Invitational. We talked about the women's final. It's time to break down the men's final. So all week long, the men went out there for the Vans Duct Tape Invitational and put on an absolute clinic. And these two finalists right here started off strong. Uh, this was a big final for Jensen and Stewart and really anyone's call when they paddled out to the lineup. Yeah, for both TJ and for Coniella, they were in a rhythm this week. For Taylor to be able to take away the win here in a duct tape is, I think, extra special for him. And he really was kind of one of those surfers to beat. He knows this break so well, Pete. You got to call the action. Connie seemed to be in rhythm throughout all of finals day, but it was Taylor's knowledge that took him to the win. Yeah, and I think that his wave choice was really the ch the difference in, in my opinion. He was able to pick those waves. It gave him the opportunity to get to the tip of the board, utilize the walk around, but also utilizing the turns, which uh, the judges seemed to really like. He was edging towards progression, but I think he kind of mentally calmed himself down. A 7.67 and a 6.17, two scores that would get you through any heat of the day. Yeah, a great result for Taylor Jensen and an excellent result as well for Coniella Stewart, the Waikiki kid advancing through, getting that second place finish behind him heading into Malibu. That's going to be a great result, but we could see the three-time world champion now head-to-head -head with Harrison Roach. Maybe he goes for a fourth world title this year. Ooh, it's going to be very exciting as we head to Malibu. Iconic longboard spot, the spot where the finals of the World Surf League Longboard Tour will be. Let's take a look at the rankings as we see them now. Freshly updated, here is your women's longboard tour rankings. Honolulu still up top, Kalis in second, Chloe Kalman and Soleil both drop a couple spots along with Tully White. Rachel Tilly moving her way up along with Caitlin Mickelson, Avalon Gall as well. So you got 10 surfers, but a bunch of ties there, which we're going to decide just around the corner in Malibu. Well, but I mean, also you got to think about Malibu is going to be double the point. So really the champion's going to be decided there. You're taking one result probably from here and whatever you can do in Malibu. So it's going to be a big event there. And so from the women's longboard tour rankings, let's flip it over and check out what's happening on the men's side of the draw. Here are your men's longboard tour rankings updated just now. Harrison Roach in the lead, Taylor Jensen way up there, tied for that first place spot. And everybody else shaking up. Ben Skinner drops one spot. Kaniela Stewart in third, Quintal in fifth, tied with Kaimana Takayama and Declan Whiten, all the way down to Cole Robbins. So again, a bunch of ties there, Shannon. All these surfers will be headed to the Cuervo Classic Longboard Championship October 3rd through the 13th, Malibu, California. And of those names that we just saw right there, I mean, it is still anyone's ball game. There's still so much on the line because there is 10,000 points heading into that event, but it's got to be those top two, the surfers that have taken the wins out for the first two events of the tour. They're keeping those as their highest scoring events heading into that. We're dropping that bottom result. So everyone's just got that singular result to them, which is why there are so many of those ties. I'm really excited for uh, finals in Malibu, and I think we're going to see those surfers that tend to thrive in a traditional wave like Malibu really find more success than maybe they did here at Huntington. Well, October can't come soon enough. The finals right around the corner at Malibu. Well,